doing the show here taught me that the space around it is much more important than I'd realized. It's, it's really integral to looking at it. You had the people inside, you could hear them, but you couldn't see them, or you could see their feet. And then you had this crowd out front, kind of gathered, watching the people inside. When a group empties out from it, you're like, it's kind of unbelievable that that many people could be held by it, you know? It was made on wood, on wood panels that I then, I would work on as drawings for a long time. They're flat on the floor and I would draw them and draw them and draw them. You could still see traces of the colored pencil. So then I would cut out the holes and then I would add in clay for the positives. And then we would cast it from clay into plaster using a, a waste mold. And then they were lifted and then just assembled together with the bolts. Night, these would be flat on the floor and I would just be rubbing them, you know, to get the different heights and different. So it's this very sensual, very kind of bodily activity, almost like making sure that the piece vibed on that. The reason we use hemp is when the synthetic versions of this, you have a lot of push and pull with the water when the water evaporates. So the sculpture actually needs to bend and move. You get these cracks and fissures and you get these weird moments where the plaster, the two plasters dry at different temperatures and they kind of warp. I'm a, I'm a sculptor who really likes to show you know, every step. that You can visually get every step along the way. It was fabulous watching, you know, my kids run through it with their grandma. There was this real beautiful dance about age and, you know, how, where you are in that cycle. My dream was always to make a complete environment, you know, to make a giant sculpture park for me and friends and my collection. But with this piece, it just moved very quickly. It kind of outpaced me. And I quickly realized that the viewer became the figure.